Hey, this is James here from Actura Technology and uh, just doing a quick video today to show you the basic setup for Active Campaign. So this is the same basic setup that I run through with any of our clients' websites. Um, so what I've done is just go on ahead and set up a uh, brand new sort of trial Active Campaign account. So there's nothing done in here yet. Um, so this is going to walk through everything from basic settings through to deliverability, which um, comes up a lot, especially with these uh, CRM type systems. If, if the uh, deliverability stuff isn't done right, then you can have your uh, messages either not, not arriving or ending up in spam and stuff like that. And obviously that's not very good. Um, and the last thing will be uh, site tracking so that we can establish that link between active campaign and your website, uh, which will allow Active Campaign to monitor what exactly your uh, clients or you know your um, contacts are doing when they arrive at your website. So first up, I always uh, go through to lists uh, to create a uh, your, your first list. In my opinion, uh, lists are kind of old news. Um, they're the, the more traditional method of email marketing that something like Aweber or MailChimp would do. Um, but obviously, um, Active Campaign was built quite a long time ago. Uh, and this is kind of a legacy thing for me. And I manage everything with tags personally. So I just create a simple list called main. You might call this all users or uh, you know everyone. I've, I've seen all kinds of things done. But um, I'm just going to go through and quickly fill this out. Alrighty, so that that list is basically where I add everyone. The only time I use more than one list these days is if um, I'm using an outdated integration that has to sign someone up to a list. So I'll create what's called a, a, a trigger list where it will put them into uh, the main list based on an automation and then just tag them with something else. Or if I'm doing a completely sort of new test uh, test list for a new product or something like that. Uh, but for now, we'll just keep it at, at main. So now we'll go over to the settings page where we're going to do pretty much everything else. Uh, you can set up your first and last name, which I'd recommend here, phone number. This stuff gets used in some emails. Um, the signature I basically never use because I don't email directly from Active Campaign. But if you like, you can um, fill in your signature here. Unfortunately, uh, unlike the email editor in Active Campaign, you can't actually copy and paste a rich signature in here like something like Wise Stamp. Um, so to me, it's a little bit useless. But go through here and um, fill out your time zone. Um, and that's it. Oh, one thing I forgot to say is make sure if you have LastPass, make sure it's disabled when you are doing this because for some reason, it messes with the Active campaign settings screen and uh, it won't save, especially on uh, the advanced tab, which we'll get to pretty soon. Next, I uh, jump through to the advanced tab. Most of uh, this stuff through users and deals and notifications, it really depends on your setup. So there's no sort of generic uh, setup here. It depends if you want to have notifications or not. Um, but I mean, you can have a look through there yourself. But until then, we'll go to advanced. Uh, this is the email deliverability first. I'd have a quick check of your date format because it it'll default to backwards American format. Uh, you know, from it goes medium, small, big. If you're in Australia or UK or somewhere that does the date properly, uh, you might you might want to change it to uh, small, medium, big in the right order. Um, and then uh, you can hit save. But while I'm here, I'm going to do the email deliverability. So. Um, we're going to change it to, I will manage my own authentication. And uh, if you're familiar with this, this is where you set up your SPF and um, DKIM or domain keys. So um, we're going to put in our, whatever our website is. Uh, in this case, it's uh, curatech.com. Hit generate and same thing down here. Now, uh, here you're going to need access to your DNS. I'm going to do this demo with Cloudflare because it's pretty common. 
Um, I recommend Cloudflare because it's it's really fast at propagating any changes. Um, but for you, this might be under a C panel or it might be uh, where you bought your domain. It kind of differs. Um, if you don't know, you're probably going to need to talk to your tech person. The easiest one is uh, SPF. They call it sender ID here. It's kind of the same thing. Um, you can see SP SPF here. Uh, but this is the record we need to add into our um, DNS account. Now, we actually don't want those um, double quotes. So there's one little uh, thing here in that, um, so let's say this is a pretty sort of typical setup for a DNS. We've got A records, a couple of C names, we've got Google Apps. And there's an, you'll notice here there's an existing text record that is an SPF. So the first thing you need to do is go and see if you have this record. If there's an SPF here, this, the uh, setup's gonna be slightly different because you, you shouldn't have more than one of these. So this is a typical one for Google Apps. Now, if we did not have that, we'd be able to copy that straight into here uh, and just leave it as that. But in this case, because we've got Google here already, we kind of need to edit the one that's already here. So I'm just going to take out that middle bit between the all and the SPF. Take that include out. And I'm going to put it in here just before the final all. So make sure there's a space there and a space there. Uh, so now we're telling it to include Google, include Active Campaign, uh, and then deny everything else. So that is how you set up your sender ID or SPF. The second one, slightly more complex. Uh, Sorry, what I didn't say is uh, if you don't have a text record there already, you'll need to create a new one, and that's uh, that's just going to be on your main domain. So in, in this case, our website's acturatech.com, so I would have said acturatech.com, add a new text record, and I could have pasted that directly in without the quotes, uh, but obviously I've already got it, so I'm not gonna do that. So yeah, back to um, DCAM. First thing we're going to get uh, this because it's not on our straight domain, acturatech.com. I have to get the little bits in the front, the DK and domain key. Uh, this can vary, change a little bit between different uh, DNS setups. So sometimes they won't want you to put this portion in. They they'll only expect uh, that. Um, some want the whole thing. Fortunately, Cloudflare is smart enough to just strip it out anyway, so we can put the whole thing in. And I will copy this text record value into here. I get rid of those uh, quotes again. And I'll hit add record. And you see that um, Cloudflare has stripped it out for me. So some, some things are that smart, some aren't. So generally, it'll complain at you if you do it the wrong way. Um, so you just try the opposite. So if it had a complaint at me with this, I would have just put .acturatech.com onto the end of that. And uh, that's it for DNS. So we'd hit save. Um, in this case, continue. Depends what system you're in. Um, it should be pretty obvious. And we're also going to hit save on this page. Now remember, if this doesn't work, make sure LastPass is deactivated. I've had a lot of trouble on this page before. And the final thing we're going to go through is site tracking, which is incredibly important and you should do it straight away. Obviously on the tracking tab, we're going to go to site tracking, flick it to on and it's going to give us some code. Um, first, you want to add your domain that you want to start tracking. Any websites you own that you're going to add this code on. So if you have multiples, you're going to add them all here. And then you're going to take this code and we're going to put it into our uh, template. Generally, you know, most people are using WordPress. So I've just got, got an example here. It does change basically every time. Uh, if you're using Genesis, um, I know mo like a lot of people are using Genesis. So you can actually go to Genesis theme settings. It'll bring you to this page. Uh, you can go down the bottom into header and footer scripts into the header and dump it there. Um, sometimes it'll be under like appearance uh, or theme editor or if you've got some theme specific options you might have to find it or use a plugin to do it or just speak to your tech guy um, so I'm just gonna save that and that's gonna be it for our site tracking so that's pretty much it for now um, one one other little tool I will show you is with your DNS records um, so once we've made a change like that we can see um, 
if they're actually active, if the change we've made is working by going to whatsmydns.net. Uh, and, oops, I can't type. And we want to do a text record search on that. And we can see, so that one has not propagated yet. If I go to anchorotech.com, so this is our current one, which has not, so this is all our old one, uh, which hasn't quite propagated yet. So what you'll see here is the new value might, uh, if you do it straight away, it might have not changed anywhere. It might have only changed in a few servers around the world, but eventually this should all update to become your new uh, text record. So you just put in your main domain, which is the one we stole. Um, oops, I'm not on that page anymore. Um, ah. I don't know why it does this, but it does. Um, so yeah, for your basic uh, SPF record, you'll use acturatech.com or whatever your domain is in this lookup. And for your domain key, you will use that full one without the last uh, full stop there. And to check out uh, if it's actually propagating and if you've done it correctly. So that's the full basic setup that I always do on our client websites. And uh, let me know if you have any questions.